Let's take some time to look at quality assurance, which is known as QA for short, and it's an area of production responsible for detecting issues and preventing failures. And the goal is to is to provide the highest quality to the customers and to create a product or service that is compatible with requirements and expectations. And quality assurance verifies the software only after the development phase, and the QA role is not as technical as a developer and may not even require coding. And QA primarily focuses on the processes and procedures that improve quality. So this includes training, documentation, monitoring, and audits. And QC focuses on the product to find defects that remain after the development. So the QC professionals find these issues in a variety of way, ways, including like software testing and beta canary testing. So that's the difference between the quality control and quality assurance. And in quality control, some of the methods are like X bar charts, Six Sigma, 100% inspection mode, and Taguchi method. You know, there's a whole lot of ways to approach it. And a quality analyst is uh, there to look at the overall functionality of a product. And this testing happens with a core intention to guarantee that the product meets meets the organization's compliance standards and common practices. So it's important to document, implement, monitor, and enforce all processes for testing as per the standards defined by the organization. So tracking, reporting, testing activities like test results, test case coverage, required resources, defects, metrics, and performance baselines. So unlike other office jobs that are, you know, exhausting or can lead to professional burnout, QA engineers rarely have overtime because the work is not really stressful and the deadlines are hardly ever pressing, which in turn can limit the amount of stress experienced by the QA engineers. And testing is a subset of QC, quality control, and it's a process of executing a system in order to detect the bugs, like we said, in the product so that they get fixed and testing is an integral part of quality control because it helps demonstrate that the product runs the way that it's expected and desired to run. So let's look at ISO 9000, which is defined as a set of international standards on quality management and quality assurance developed to help companies effectively document the quality system elements needed to maintain an efficient quality system. And quality assurance matrix is a standardized process that takes potential or actual quality concerns, ranks their importance to customer satisfaction, and evaluates the robustness of the manufacturing and inspection processes against the potential or actual seriousness of the concerns. And the basic qualities are things like, you know, performance quality, excitement quality, and the quality analyst is responsible to validate and audit accuracy of the price inputs. And they'll be expected to work with multiple stakeholders to ensure that the price errors are fixed. And this is done in a timely manner. So software assurance, QA testing, it's really easy to learn and it's not really code intensive. So you'll have to learn some coding a little bit, but not to the same extent as a software or web developer. So software QA test training typically takes like six to 10 weeks, whereas web development training takes anywhere from 12 to 26 weeks. So that's just for your basic start. And QA is equally as important as the devs. No matter how good of a coder they are, they're still only human, so they will make mistakes. And I'd never say one is superior to the other. Rather, they should learn to coexist on an equal level and quality assurance, these analysts are responsible for the final step and the development of, you know, whether it's a game, a website, or software, and this has to go through QA before it's released to the public. And they have the duties and responsibilities of documenting, reporting products, service quality levels, you know, developing and implementing standards for inspection, developing a workflow for product inspection, and developing plans to help the company manage waste. And that automation analyst has to specialize in developing quality control procedures for systems and software. And if we look at 
quality assurance, it's optimizing a whole software and application development process and controls the testing process, while software testing mainly focuses on the test cases and their implementation. QA is primarily product-oriented, which is done to validate its features and its functions per the client's requirements. So when should the QA activities start? The QA activities should start from the beginning of the project. So the more early the quality is controlled, the more beneficial it is to set the standards for achieving the quality that you get in the end. And if the QA activities get delayed, it will result in more costs, time, and effort. I mean, you can call it alpha testing, you know, is predominantly, you know, ensuring bug-free functionality, beta testing, you know, is about releasing the software to a limited number of real users, and uh, they're free to use it as they want. So in other words, this testing is unstructured. So that's what you have with beta testing. And some of the most popular testing tools, a few of which you've probably heard of, include uh, Selenium, Catalon Studio, Silk Test, Squish, Test Complete, Renorix, Appium, and Eggplant. So there are a whole lot more. And if you need more details, we can go into that. But what's the first step? You know, explanation, identification of customer need is the first step of QA, after which further basic elements of QA are identified. And QA depends not only on QC, but also on the activities of the entire company. And then why is the ISO 9000 and why important? Because the key benefits of 9001 ISO improve customer satisfaction by understanding your customer's needs and reducing errors. You increase customer confidence in your ability to deliver products and services. Higher operating efficiency by following industry best practice and focusing on quality. You can reduce costs that way. And in any industry, Quality control is a process that's used to ensure freeing the product from bugs, operational issues, and any of those problems that you can think of. In auto manufacturing, you'll find that cars will have to go through vigorous testing to make sure that they're well-engineered, that they're safe, and that they're comfortable. And so a test matrix is used to capture the actual quality, the effort, the plan, the resources, and the time required to complete all phases of the software testing. So a coverage matrix that's also known as a traceability matrix maps the test cases and the customer requirements. Then we have automotive manufacturing quality. You'll find that, like we said, it's a good example to see how they really put the car through as much hell as possible to make sure that it has excellent engineering, you know, and safety. And of course, like we said, comfort for the end user. And then there's also 5S quality and, you know, 5S is defined as a methodology that results in a workplace that is clean, uncluttered, safe, and well-organized to help reduce waste and to optimize productivity. And so it's designed to help build a quality work environment, both physically and mentally, because mentally is important. And in closing, you know, quality is essential for a business to succeed. And there are two primary ways of managing quality which is quality control and quality assurance. This brings us to the end. Thank you for listening. My name is Ian Hillman. Comment, rate, subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.